uh, Professor Kohai Arai. Thank you, Lars. Uh, this is the title of my talk, Computer Input with the Human Eyes Only and Its Applications. I'm Kohei Arai of Saga University of Japan. I'm also adjunct professor of the University of Arizona, editor-in-chief of the uh, IJACSA, um, International Journal of uh, Advanced Computer Science and Applications. Here I have the contents of my talk, starting from the research background and computer input by human eyes only, and the comparison between the conventional and the proposed method, followed by applications of the eye-based human-computer interaction, EBHCI, and conclusion and discussions. Um, computer input just by sight. So if the user look at the uh, keyboard displayed onto the computer display, then the computer realizes which key are selected and determined. That is the uh, computer input just by sight. We have in Japan disabled person almost uh, four, um, 3.7 million of the disabled person, and the elderly person, 31 million of the peoples. And uh, we need to create the wearable computing facility. Uh, this is a um, research background. And um, year 2001, the one cerebral policy student entered my university. He cannot use arm, hand, finger, leg, and foot. And I met the ALS patient. They strongly wanted to use the computer and um, talk with the other person through the internet because they have to lay down on the bed. So um, I'd like to give the, such a capability to the uh, cerebral palsy student as well as the ALS patient that is the motivation of my research work. Here I have the problems. There are so many problems of the conventional computer input just by sight. One, key success rate, key in success rate is very, very poor. The second one is the influence due to elimination conditions. So uh, if the illumination condition is not so good, then the key in success rate goes down sharply. It requires time-consumable calibration. So uh, before using the computer input just by sight, they have to have the calibration. It's time-consumable. And uh, they have to concentrate the gaze location, and the inference due to head pause or head movement. Um, my student, uh, not incidentally, accidentally, he moves, always moves. And such a user can use the computer input just by sight. And it's expensive. Yep, commercially available computer input just by sight is there on the market, but it's too expensive and not easy to use. This example is very expensive. 10,000 US dollar. 
Betas patient or my student cannot purchase such this expensive tools and not easy to use. So um, I have to improve these. And the uh, definition, yeah, from now on, I will talk about the uh, principles or uh, of the uh, computer input just by sight. Firstly, I have to define the line of sight and the gaze location. Here I have the uh, human eye in the middle, in the center. And uh, at the top, we have the cornea, sclera, and the nimbus is the edge between the cornea and the sclera. And uh, here the lens. And uh, we can uh, estimate the curvature of the cornea by using the double purkinia image. So um, I can estimate the uh, center of the curvature of the cornea, cornea center. And pupil can be extracted from the uh, face image, then the line between the uh, center of the curvature of the cornea and the pupil center is a line of sight. The human user looking at, look direction. And here at the top of this figure, there is a computer screen. The cross point of the computer screen and the line of sight is a gaze location. So we can estimate the gaze location. And if we display the screen keyboard on the computer screen, then the computer realizes which key is selected and determined. This is the principle of the computer input just by sight. But uh, we have the trouble uh, due to uh, some reason. The line of sight vector moves, not the uh, steady. It's varied. So uh, if the size of the key is larger than the uh, variance of the line of sight vector estimated, then that we can select the key. But it's not always. So a standard deviation of the gaze instability is a key issue here. I have the example. Here the document and the black circle shows the location of the Now the, um, the user reading the character. And the um, green circle shows the user uh, at which user looking at. So uh, it's quite different. That is the instability of the gaze, est uh, gaze location estimation. And as, of, as I mentioned before, the head <coughs> movement, user, um, such as uh, computer input by human eyes only, have to allow user's movement. And um, using the feature point, we can estimate the head pose. And head mount display, if we have, and the uh, near infrared camera with the uh, near infrared light sources mounted on the glass. I'm, this time, I'm not wearing the uh, allied glass, but um, I call this uh, single 
head-mount display plus near-infrared camera with the near-infrared light sources. It's called Allies glass. If we wear the, such a glass, then the, such a glass allows the uh, user's movement. It's a, one of the breakthrough. Here I have the example of the head pose estimation. Lock on, two eyes, center of the two eyes, and uh, eye blow, two edges of the uh, eyes. It's easy to extract the feature. Then we can estimate the head pose like this. So that the, we can estimate head pose and the line of sight vector, a blue colored uh, line shows the uh, look direction or line of sight. Then, by using the OpenCV, as you know, the OpenCV provides such this capability. If the user um, goes back and goes front and right and left, and look the right direction, left direction, the OpenCV acquired location and head pose and extracts the eye and the um, pupil center and the curvature of the uh, cornea. It's not so difficult. That's why the user can select the specific key, desired key, in the uh, keyboard, screen keyboard, then select and determine. And uh, he is now using the computer input just by sight and blinking means the determination. And he look at the uh, specific key, then the selected key, the color of the selected key changed in blue. Then Saga University, he uh, already typed. Uh, this is the same thing. We can use the site for controlling the mouse or cursor. It's called camera mouse. So a camera acquires the user's face, extracts the eye and the pupil and the cornea curvature, then line of sight is estimated and select the cursor and he is now typing the Saga University by eyes only. Next thing I have to overcome is that uh, inference due to elimination condition change. Uh, we can use the near-infrared light sources in the middle of the uh, camera, uh, near-infrared camera, um, there is an aperture of the camera. Surrounding the aperture, the eight near-infrared light sources are located, situated. So by using the light source uh, position, are uh, reflected on the cornea so that the, we can estimate the cornea curvature. This is the principle of the uh, double purkinia. Also, it can be used to remove the inference due to shadow, shade, etc., um, etc. Et 
by using the light source and camera. If I use the just a visible camera, we would have the big trouble due to a shadow and shade and, and the others. But uh, we do have the light source and camera. That's why we can remove such an influence due to uh, illumination condition change. Look direction and the line of sight is defined as a line between coronary curvature center and the pupil center. Pupil, the shape of the pupil is the ellipsoid. It's not easy to find out that middle center of the ellipsoid. And the coronary curvature, as I mentioned before, by using a double Purkinje images, then we could estimate the curvature. And the curvature center can be estimated. It, a uh, single head mount display, HMD, does cost around 40 US dollar. Not so expensive. Resolution of the HMD and the other specification are listed here. And here I have the near infrared camera with the near infrared light sources. It does cost 30 boxes. And uh, here's the resolution or some other specification of the uh, near-infrared camera. How the near-infrared camera with the light source looks like is here. He is now wearing the uh, allied glass. The center, middle, uh, there is the uh, Near infrared camera. Surrounding the aperture of the near infrared camera, there are eight the near infrared light sources. And by using visual, uh, visual studio, year 2005, and OpenCV, this computer input just by sight can be developed. So um, it's very cheap. Calibration is needed for adjustment of the distance between the user and the computer screen. But if you use the allied glass, then distance between the display and the human eye is fixed. That's why we don't need the calibration. Calibration is no longer needed. And um, yeah, it's very time consumable process calibration is. Here I have the example. Here looking at the top left corner of the computer screen and uh, move to the right hand directions and the middle and bottom, bottom right to bottom uh, left to right. Uh, this is a calibration process. It's time consumable. <coughs> and then the screen has been changed. Uh, menu it comes up. And he creates the new window. And uh, he try to key in it takes time. Konnichiwa takes more than 20 seconds. And the uh, time consumable calibration require the uh, more than one minute. I invented the computer input just by sight. And this is the news articles of the uh, Tokyo Times International. 
on the November 15th of 2006 in the Italian paper, La Stampa, uh, on the uh, January the 10th of year 2007. And the improvement of the key in success rate, it's a final obstacles. As I mentioned before, the conventional computer key, uh, computer input just by sight is very, very poor of the success rate, key in success rate. So uh, I had to improve the accuracy of the key in success rate. Um, this is the um, breakthrough. Final bullet. Third bullet says the keyboard can be moved. Screen keyboard can move right to left, top to bottom. We can control by human eyes only the location of the key. So the uh, only thing we need is just five enlarged keys. Top, bottom, right, left, and center. That's it. This is the layout of the moving keyboard. Um, here I have the example. Firstly, calibration is needed for the, uh, uh, he, is, um, he didn't wear the glass so that the calibration is needed in, for this time. And here I have the eye image and the pupil center is marked with a white circle. And here I have the enlarged five keys, top, bottom, right, left, and the middle, center. And if the user looking at the right-hand side, then keyboard moves right-hand side. And if the user looking at the left key, then keyboard will be moved to left-hand side. Right-hand side, left-hand side, and up and down easily. The, it depends on the gauge location. And the middle, if the user looking at the um, center key, then the such a key is selected. And um, keep seeing the specific key for 0 0.7 second, then the selected key is determined because the accidental blinking is finished within 0 0.3 second so that the I determine the interval is the uh, 0 0.7 second so that the if the user looking at the center key for zero, more than 0 0.7 second, then the computer realized this key was selected and determined. And he uh, tried to key in the Saga University Um, the other thing uh, it uh, has to be overcome is that uh, users fatigue, fatigue. So by using the EEG signal, users fatigue are measured. And uh, compare the users fatigue between the fixed screen keyboard and the moving keyboard. Here's the electrode at the forehead. Uh, one of the electrode is situated, and the other one is the ear. Uh, two electrode, if we 
where then we can um, uh, measure the um, tiredness or fatigue. Here the example of the easy signal for the uh, fixed keyboard and the um, bottom two figures shows alpha one and alpha two. For those who are not familiar with the EEG signal, I would briefly touch upon the uh, alpha one and alpha two means. What does alpha one means is that um, low frequency components of the uh, brain wave. So that the, if the user feels the relaxed state, status, then alpha one wave is dominant. And uh, if the user irritated, then the beta frequency or gamma frequency is dominant. Uh, visualization tools are available commercially and using the analysis tools with the um, visualization tools, I estimated the alpha one frequency component to gamma two frequency component. And um, for the uh, time duration, um, sometimes the user have to move the line of sight gaze location so quickly in such case, user feels the irritation. That's why in such case, the uh, beta wave and the gamma wave is dominant. This is for the fixed keyboard. This one here is a moving keyboard. The discrepancy between both is quite obvious. This one, beta wave is dominant. And the moving keyboard, alpha wave is dominant. So relax. Um, user can use the computer input just by sight and the relax status. Regressive analysis, just an example. Um, this is for the uh, moving window, uh, moving keyboard case. So a user can increase the attention and the meditation status will be decreased monotonically. Uh, this is the summarized experimental result of the amplitude at the peak alpha frequency of the moving keyboard is greater than that of the fixed keyboard. That means the user feels much more relaxed by, uh, during the using the moving keyboard rather than the fixed keyboard. Uh, this is the commercially available product, so-called Mega Talk. I invented and the manufacturer of the Japanese company create such this product, so-called Megatalk. By the way, Mega means the I talks something. And this is the TV news. And here I have the demonstration of the computer input just by sight. The young lady, TV, announcer uses this product and just by sight she input the character in Japanese and after creation of the sentence uh, takes to talk gives us the sound From now on, I would talk about the application 
Now the computer input just by sight. First one is the communication aid. As I mentioned before, if we key in by using human eyes only, then the created sentence can be read by the uh, uh, text to talk software tools. That's why ALS patient can communicate with the some other person. Another application of the computer input just by sight is the uh, electric wheelchair control by human eyes only. Here I have the uh, camera and netbook in the back, and here is the electric wheelchair. It's a demonstration. He cannot use the hand, finger, just sitting on the electric wheelchair. And he can control the direction of the electric wheelchair. Another example of the application of the computer input just by sight is the eye-controlled robotics. In this case, service robot can be controlled by human eyes only. If the user uh, looking at the um, right direction, then the micro robotics or service robot can move a turn right. Left hand side, if, you, if the user looking at, then the service robot turn left. And the middle, if the pa uh, patient or user looking at the center, then the service robot goes forward. Here has the block diagram, eye. Uh, camera acquires the eye image and the micro PC with the uh, communication tools of the Bluetooth and Bluetooth to serial, microcontroller, control the direction, motor one, left hand side, and the motor two, right hand side. So um, we can control the service robot. And uh, also, the top uh, tip of the service robot, they with the uh, camera, so a user can uh, look around the scenery outside of the service robot, and um, this is a demonstration. I'm tracing the service robot and acquire the image, and here I have the image acquired with the camera mounted on the tip of the service robot. And uh, if the patient, ALS patient, lay down on the bed, wear the allied glass, control the service robot, and the service robot can move, control by the patient eye only, and go to a nurse station and communicate with the nurse I'm so thirsty, I want some drinks. Such a com conversation can be done with the service robot. Another application is having meal aid. Here I have the uh, robot arm uh, equipped at the side of the bed and the ALS patient lay down on the bed and control the robot arm. And the robot arm, uh, tip of the robot arm, there is a camera. And the camera acquired the image of the food on the tray, then pick up the one of the desired food and retrieve to the uh, 
ALS patient. This is the principle. Here I have the demonstration film, short film, of the uh, having a meal aid. Firstly, the robot arm have to find out their location, zero position, and go to the food on the tray. Another application is the information correction aid. The ALS patient lay down on the bed can watch the TV, listen to the radio, e-learning content, e-book or e-comic, and the phoning and web browser for search engine and communication aid such as these menus are available for the ALS patient just lay down on the bed. By using the moving keyboard, we can input the keyword in the dialog box of the search engine. Then information collection can be done. This is the example of the TV watching. Um, yeah. Here's the radio station location using the Google API. Uh, we created the location of the radio station. We can uh, um, tune the specific radio station. And the phoning is available by human eyes only. In the middle, we have the number starting from zero to nine so that the phone number can be input by human eyes only. And if the, all the phone number was set up, then call. If the user are looking at the top center, then the phoning can be done. And um, by using the moving keyboard computer input just by sight, he, uh, he or she can create the sentence. And by using text to talk, then the voice will be uh, transferred to the other person. This is the phoning capability. Reading a book, e-book, or TV, extraction of the uh, information from the TV, CN, can be done. This is an example of the e-comic reader. Here, again, he, wearing, he is wearing the uh, allies glass and looking at this one uh, display. On the computer screen, the e-comic is appeared. He can choose the one of the uh, content and the display onto the computer screen, then read the e-comic content by human eyes only. Another example of the application of the computer input just by sight is e-learning. And uh, in this case, um, lecturer may watch the student gaze locations. If I have the e-table, e-table means the uh, um, student uh, wear the allies grass. Then the lecturer's desk, I can monitor the, uh, each student um, looking at the uh, e-learning contents, which portion of the e-learning contents the specific student is now looking at. I can understand from the lecturer's desk. This is the 
uh, principles of the e-learning application of the computer input just by sight. Here I have the example of the uh, e-learning contents. Location one is the uh, lecturer's face. And um, image portion number two is the uh, description or keyword. Number three is a moving picture. The result is obvious. If the student looking at and reading the description and the keyword, then the uh, score of the achievement test is very, very high in comparison to the other location. Here I have the yeah, correlation coefficient. So the um, number two uh, portion the student have to look at. The final application is a wearable computer. If the user wear the Arise glass with single head mount display and web camera or near infrared camera with the light sources, then there is the um, communication links between the camera head mount display and tablet terminal or smartphone or iPhone. <coughs> Such a mobile terminal, if the user wear, then it's a wearable computing, computer. Um, this is the conclusion. Computer input with the human eyes only uh, becomes the wearable computer. And the computer input with the human eyes only by means of the uh, moving keyboard, I'm pretty sure the 100% of the uh, success rate of the key in and uh, reducing the user's fatigue. And single eyes head mount display and the near infrared camera with the near infrared light source gives us the some merit. Calibration is no longer needed. And the near infrared camera with the near infrared light source makes robust against the illumination condition change. Here I have the list of the application. Now the proposed computer input just by sight. And what's next? I would like to discuss the future application field of the computer input just by sight with you after the presentation offline. Thank you.